sex with GMO labeling. This is something those on both sides of the disagreements could actually maybe even agree on. And taking out the trash, farmers say that there's a problem. They want more enforcement. We take a look at this controversy. And you get to meet a set of triplets. You're watching NTV's Grow. National lawsuit against ag company Syngenta gains momentum. There was a recent meeting about it, and a lot of you farmers are getting letters in the mail asking for you to go to these meetings. Here's the latest on what's happening. A lot of firms say Syngenta sold corn before it was approved to China. China rejected over 5 million tons. Some say that caused the corn market to fall. So today, Lost Corn Income, a firm that specializes in agriculture issues, says the greatest risk for farmers is to not sign up at all. This firm is holding meetings four times a day in different towns across Nebraska. If you're interested in signing up, this is what most attorneys are asking for. Basically, their acres for 2013 and 14 for corn, as well as their bushels and like any beginning and ending inventory, and they can get some of that information off of their crop insurance forms. This firm already has more than 3,000 clients and say the more people that sign up, the more pressure it will bring to settle the lawsuit. It sets important precedents for companies to behave in, in socially uh, responsible ways to keep the overall market as a whole healthy and to keep farmers on their land and farming. Syngenta has said the lawsuits are without merit and say their corn has made farmers more profitable. Now if you're wondering the time frame for when or if farmers will see any money back, it all depends on the wheels of justice. Lost Corn Income hopes the federal judge will see this suit on a case-by-case -case basis and have a settlement in 18 months. A GMO labeling bill that could help with clarity. And this is what several soy growers are standing behind. The bill was introduced and referred to the House Energy and Commerce Committee. It would provide for a national labeling standard for non-GMO foods. The bill bypasses a potentially conflicting patchwork of state laws and regulations governing the labeling of GMO and non-GMOs. It establishes one common framework for labeling at the national level. The American Soybean Association says this would help end some confusion for consumers. Wheat. This is in a lot of food that we eat, but for some consumers, because of allergies, they're not able to consume wheat. So that's why Chris Miller with Ingrain says efforts are being made to make wheat an option for those people that's underway. Really trying to identify the components in wheat protein that cause a um, reaction in people that have celiac disease. It would really be a life-changing thing for people that have this medical condition. The idea would be to eliminate the allergen in gluten. Researchers say they hope to have a product on the shelves within the next 10 to 15 years. Taking out the trash. Some farmers in Hall County say enough is enough. Some trash from dump trucks are flying out of the vehicles on their way to the landfill. NTV Steve White has more on this issue. You, you can't believe how many trucks go up and down this road every single day. Cardboard and plastic litter the fields. Mike Doba says it comes from trucks on their way to the Grand Island City landfill. It's not a new problem but this year just seems to be worse. His neighbors agree. A dozen signed a letter that Mike presented the Hall County Board asking for help. Oh, as a good neighbor, if I had uh, any trash blow out of my yard to my neighbors, I'd go pick it up. So I guess that's kind of all we'd, we'd like to do is just we'd like to see our trash picked up. There are two problem areas. Both are roads leading to city waste sites. Signs are posted warning haulers they could be fined if they don't cover their loads. The city penalizes more haulers than many realize. We actually enforced the policy or imposed the fee 198 times over the past year at both locations. The policy's been on the books more than a decade. And we do have some people that get pretty unhappy about it. But on the other hand, the folks living along the travel corridors to our facilities uh, don't want to have to deal with the mess that's created from it. Farmers say it's not pop cans, it's commercial debris. 
plastic all over the fields and it's it's all over up and down. City leaders take pride in making sure their facilities don't look like a dump, but off city property, they rely on haulers to do their part. So there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. The, the entire load has to be completely tarped. A Nebraska farmer testifies on the EPA's impact in front of a Senate subcommittee. Jeff Metz of Angora made his way to Capitol Hill. He spoke against the negative impact of the Waters of the United States ruling. Last year, the EPA and Army Corps of Engineers released a proposed rule to redefine Waters of the United States under the Clean Water Act. Metz says the ruling isn't about clean water, but about explaining the federal government's power. Nebraska Senator Ben Sass says Congress needs to hear from the people it affects. Congress needs to hear from Nebraskans who care about clean water, who care about the environment, but also have to pay the price for foolish red tape. These are the greatest producers on earth, and we need to trust their common sense a little bit more. Sass is a major opponent against this initiative. Nebraska cattlemen voicing their concerns, saying the HSUS is putting up a fight to expand livestock across the state. LB 106 would create a new scoring system, a tool to help counties decide where to allow dairies, hog barns, and feedlots. Nebraska cattlemen say HSUS is telling its supporters to oppose the measure. Cattlemen say their problem with that is the bill is not about animal care. Cattlemen say HSUS has a radical anti-livestock agenda. A lot of cattlemen and women out there are taking care of baby calves. We got another video here of some triplets born in our area. There's two sucking and a third one lying down. A Nebraska couple sent us this video. They say all three girls are doing great and all three are with mom for now. Alberta adds this is pretty exciting since triplets are very rare and saving them almost impossible. But so far so good and we of course are behind you 100%. Good luck. A lot of livestock lost in a fire as it consumes four out of the ten buildings at a hog operation just south of Fairbury. NTV's John Jankowski was there and shows you the devastation. Smoke still rises after Sunday night's fire at this hog farm. Owner of Livingston Enterprises Bruce Livingston says it's heartbreaking. It's very painful. Um, you know, one thing we're just fortunate that uh, uh, none of our um, uh, workers or um, nobody got uh, got hurt um, everybody got out safe the cause of the fire is still under investigation four buildings burnt to the ground and two more suffered damage fairbury fire chief kenny crosby says this is the biggest fire he has seen in his 25 years of work he has a ventilation and hot containment buildings is always a challenge there's no dividers really in those buildings and the alleyways that connect each building so um, once the fire starts in one of those, it spreads rapidly. Prousey says another challenge was the wind started to blow in the opposite direction while they were fighting the fire. But they were still able to prevent the large blaze from spreading to other buildings. Before the fire, the farm had more than 8,000 pigs on site. Many of them died, and they are not sure how many they still have. The next step is to rebuild. This is just going to be a, a bump in the road. We'll get this site here uh, up and running. and, and uh, we're actually got plans. We're going to start another site here in, in two months. He says he'll get the new site started once he gets the permits he needs. The power of corn in the spotlight, especially when it comes to turning it to ethanol in NASCAR. American ethanol reaches a milestone in NASCAR, topping 7 million miles. That equates to almost 30 trips from the Earth to the moon. NASCAR began running E15 in 2011. As a 100% renewable fuel, American ethanol has proven to lower emission and boost performance, increasing horsepower of the race cars. NASCAR uses E15 exclusively in all race cars in its top three racing series, Sprint Cup, Nationwide, and Camping World Truck. One of the nation's largest farmer-owned co-ops has a new leader. CPI picked a new CEO. They selected Steve Dom. CPI is owned by 3,100 farmers with locations in 39 central Nebraska communities. Don grew up on a small farm in North Dakota and was most recently head of a co-op in South Dakota. He also has experience running an ethanol plant. He will take the reins of the Hastings-based farm co-op in May. We talk about foreign trade, how it impacts Nebraska, and the Trade Promotion Authority. 
that some want to see given to the president. We'll have the concerns about this coming up after the break.